One very useful string function is called replace. And just as the name implies, this allows you to replace all the instances of one string inside some other larger string with yet a third. So in this case, we're going to look at all the values in the units column in TBL unit. And we're going to replace the word 10 with the digits 1, 0, or 10 as a numeric. Now, we're not actually going to replace it in the sense of updating the column to have a new value. We're just here going to return a second column that shows us what it would look like if we did replace it in the table. So let me select this. And in this query, we're also showing you the original units value, just so you can see the difference. If I scroll down, notice that here, where it says 10-pack, that's how it reads in the table. In our return set from this query, we're showing it as 10-pack with a 1-0. Because we said, look inside this string, look for this, and replace it with this. That's the replace function. Now you may be wondering about how you can find these functions, how you can find out the syntax. And of course, one way would be just to go into Books Online. I could double click on this and hit Shift F1, and it would bring up Books Online and give all the syntax and examples that I need to use this function, plus helpful remarks. But what if you don't know what to look for? It's kind of like uh, using a dictionary to correct your spelling only works if you know how to look up the value in the dictionary. So from here in Query Analyzer, I can bring up the object browser. And I can look underneath common objects and see groupings of the most commonly used functions. If I'm looking for a string function, I'll come here, expand that, and as I browse through, it'll show me a little description of each of the string functions. In this case, we see that there is something here called replace, and it gives me, it tells me how to use it. I can expand this and see what the parameters are. If I want to, I can just right click, drag this into my query analyzer and get a statement automatically inserted that allows me to, to make use of the syntax. While, once this is selected, I'll go up here and choose Replace Template Parameters. And it's true, I have to know a little about what's going on. But once I understand the syntax, at least the second, third time I use Replace, I can just go in here, type in the different values that I want, and I'm on my way. So the Object Browser is a great tool when it comes to working with built-in functions in Transact SQL. Now, how about if I want to insert some text into the middle of some other text rather than replacing it completely? There's something well named for that, stuff. Okay, And again, the easiest way is to just show you how it works. I'll select this line, execute it, and you see what's happening? We're saying we're going to start with this string. We're going to go to the third character in that string. We're going to replace the two characters that start with the third character, in other words, the three and the four. And we're going to replace those two characters with whatever I have here, in this case, XXXX. So we're replacing three and four with XXXX. It's a, another type of replace operation. In this case, replacing only part of the string rather than the entire string. You'll frequently want to check the length of a string value, sometimes just to find out if that length is greater than zero. You'll also want to be able to extract just the leftmost or the rightmost characters from a string. And sometimes you'll want to combine these all together. For example, here I'm going to look at the leftmost characters in units. How many do I want to look at? Well, to determine how many to look at, in this case, I'm going to take the length of units, subtract 3 from it, okay? I'm going to call that lefty, and I'll also look at the rightmost characters in units, again, using length as a way to figure out how many characters I want. In other words, I want to see everything except those last three. Um, this is kind of a silly example, but what you'll find is that very often databases that were not designed in a fully normalized way will have part numbers or other codes that include a bunch of different pieces of information combined together in a single field. Now that is a violation of first normal form. 
but that is also the real world. And these string functions allow you to go into pieces of data like that and extract just the parts that you need. Another useful function in that regard is substring. Okay? Substring allows me to say, I'm going to look at the first name, I'm going to look at starting with the first character in first name, and I'm going to extract just one character. Now in this example, we could just as easily have used left first name and taken the first character. What's good about substring is you don't have to start with the first character. You can start with any character, kind of like we did with stuff. In this case, we're using it to extract just the first character. And so we're using that to give us sort of a first initial. We're taking that first character and adding on just period space and then last name to get the first initial. And again, we could have used left here if I instead wanted to pluck out a value from the middle of the string, then I really would have to use substring because I'm able to specify where I want to start and how many characters I want to pluck out. Here's an example that's slightly more complicated using substring with category. I'll run it for you. And what we're doing here is we're creating a column called shark what? All right. In other words, we assume that all our categories are shark somethings, but we're not sure shark what they are. They all start with a shark, which has six characters, okay, including the space after the word shark. And so we're going to look at all our categories. We're going to basically count over, start with the sixth character, all right, and then how much do we want to extract? Well, we want to extract everything except the shark part which is going to be the length minus 5. Does that make sense? Char index or char index is another string function that's useful. It allows you to go into a string and find out where the first instance of some other string is. Very often you'll want to look for a space inside. Let's say that you have some first name, last name pairs and you want to find the space and extract just the first name. That's a situation where you may want to use char index. In our database, we're going to look at the product names in TBL product, and we're going to look at where we have the word doll appearing in that product. All right? Where, if any, is there an instance of these characters, the word doll, in our product names? Again, kind of a silly example, but hopefully this will show you how char index works. These first products, there is no doll, so it's zero. And so you can see that this is one way that we can find out if a word appears in another string. We can check whether char index is greater than zero or not. Here, we do have some situations where the word doll appears beginning with the 11th character. If I want to find out which are the doll products, here I'm going to use char index in the way that I just described to simply check for a value greater than zero and if I get that value then I know that these are all products that contain the word doll.